everyone, Lou here. If you're new here, I am a major Black Butler fan, and today I thought it'd be fun to tackle the Black Butler OVAs. Not much of a disclaimer this time around, just that I'm even discussing Season 1's only OVA pretty much. The OVAs were all just specials that came with the DVD release of the anime. It's typical anime stuff really, just about every anime back in the day had an OVA that came with the DVD release of it. Some canon, some not. Anyway, let's get started. Ciel was supposed to put on a play of Hamlet as part of a fundraising charity for orphans, but all the actors are delayed to arrive in London, so he has no choice but to get all his friends prior to episode 16 to put on the world's most disastrous performance of Hamlet. If you're familiar with Spongebob, it's a lot like the episode Band Geeks, which is one of my personal favorite episodes from the show, so I have to admit that picturing some of the hilarious jokes there with Ciel and Sebastian instead was funny while I was watching this. The actual play itself is actually pretty cringeworthy though, especially Ren Mao. Great for vintage Tumblr gifs and memes. Bad for anyone else over the age of 15 watching this. It was overall pretty okay though. What I do like is the choice in particular of picking Hamlet, a story about vengeance with a lot of themes and plot points we see reflected in Black Butler. I just hope Elizabeth doesn't end up like Ophelia because... No thank you there, I love this girl too much. Overall it's pretty good though. It's cute. A little cringy, but cute. I'm gonna be honest that looking back, this is kind of a lame series of OVAs. I mean, it's great for William T. Spears fans I'm sure, but... He's never been a character I liked all that much because both in the anime and the manga, he just kind of shows up at the tail end of things or to basically give a breadcrumb trail to show Ciel and Sebastian are on the right track in the plot. At most, William has been the most involved in the musical The Most Beautiful Death in the World, which is largely not canon and a two-hour musical, so you can imagine how little he's probably involved when our dysfunctional butler master duo is in it. Alan and Eric also take up the majority of the plot too. So seeing this whole ass origin story that's canonically debunked for manga fans is just Meh. Like, the guy William is meant to judge isn't interesting, and although I love Grell, her appearance feels mainly to push Grell and William shippers more than her trying to serve any development to show she's grown or how she discovered she's trans or anything. I don't know, it's just kind of boring and not my thing. If anything, the manga backstory of Reapers is way more interesting, specifically Undertakers, and that's it really. This kind of reminds me of what Pixar used to do back in the day when I was a kid where the end credits of the movies were like outtakes if that makes sense. It's not really meant to be taken seriously and it proposes a really fun actor AU for artists and writers online. I also love a lot of the interpretations here, like Hannah's a total bitch diva and Ash is Sebastian's stunt double, which is double funny when fans made dozens of jokes about how Ash looked like if you forgot to color Sebastian's hair in. It was also funny to see them do Edward V and Richard as the directors of the season. It was interesting as a way to incorporate them, but also, I guess Edward is a cocky bastard then, if he put himself and his brother in the last season in-universe. Oh, Pluto and Drossel are also rock stars in this OVA, which is interesting but doesn't make sense to me when neither of them show up this season i guess this was just a fun you like this character right look they're here kind of thing it is genuinely funny though especially the fake trailer for black butler 2 at the end i thought it was pretty funny and just like wonderfully over the top <laughs> Under its surface, pretty interesting actually. This takes place while Ciel is in a coma from losing his soul when Claude steals it in season 2, and Sebastian reads to Ciel every night or something like a good dad. I'm not sure when the hell Sebastian became a good dad or read to Ciel, but whatevs I guess. 
In this particular case, CL is trying to mentally piece himself back together using the plot points of Alice in Wonderland. Plus, this is an era of anime from the early 2000s to the early 2010s, where literally every anime had to have an Alice in Wonderland themed episode for some reason. Seriously, Code Geass and Oron Host Club did it, so this is just weird to me. Though I really like seeing what an adult CL could have been too, just because I think it's really cute he looks almost identical to Vincent. There is a lot of really uncomfortable fan service here by the way. I know Yana and the animation team love using Ren Mao for fan service, and that has its own problems I'm not going to get into because it's also not my place to get into it, but this was a whole new level. Like, Ren Mao is practically naked and shoving her boobs and ass into a child CL, who, may I remind you, like I just said, is literally a child. I really don't know how they got away with all the fan service for Ran Mao here, because it's pretty uncomfortable. Like, this is etchy levels of uncomfortability to me. Even Grell is pretty inappropriate while she plays the role of the Cheshire Cat. The best scene though has to be Mad Hatter with Undertaker. I just think it's such a perfect role for him, and I think it gives manga readers really great foreshadowing for his character. Unlike the original story and even the Disney version where Alice is attacked by cards and wakes up from her dream, Sebastian attacks the pre-reveal Grells and whisks the away further into Wonderland, I guess where we see in the real world, which is Sebastian reading Ciel a bedtime story. Which is a little weird, cause like, I'm pretty sure 13 is a little too old to have a bedtime story read to you, but maybe it was Sebastian trying to jog Ciel's mind to reality a little by reading him his favorite book or something. The end. On the plus side, this did make me wish J. Michael Tatum did an audiobook for Alice in Wonderland and Sebastian's voice, because it would be so good. Overall, the OVA was okay. If you want a fan service filled Alice in Wonderland with your favorite Black Butler characters to just look at them existing, then it's okay, I guess. <laughs> Okay, this sounds pretty weird to say, but this is actually one of my favorite OVAs here. Like, don't get me wrong, it's super fan y by having like, Look, it's that character! You like that character, right? Look, they're right there! Moments, but I just think it's a really cool perspective. The OVA tells the story of an unnamed brunette girl that befriended Elizabeth at a ball and was invited to meet CL at a party he's hosting at the Phantom Hive Manor. I'm guessing she's an adult by the way just because the concept art of the team shows her with an adult figure and she's also able to fit a grown woman's dress, so anyway. I mean, the Dora the Explorer narrative perspective is a little cringe, but it just reminds me of those first-person perspective visual novels. Honestly, kinda makes me wish Black Butler had some type of visual novel, maybe a point-and-click murder mystery game? I know there was a DS game, but it's region locked to Japan DS's, I think pretty hard and expensive to find a physical copy for, and even if you can emulate it, the game is pretty text heavy with zero translations, so oof. This kind of feels like a nice substitute for it since we're never getting that one. Except we can't have Black Butler without a twist though, and the twist is that our perspective character was actually an assassin sent to kill Ciel by pretending to befriend Elizabeth, which I thought was pretty cool. In the end, I guess she quits being an assassin and does who knows what. The end. I just think this OVA is super fun, and even though we never see it, I love the fashion of the protagonist for this because the silhouette's just really pretty, especially the second outfit. Man, Rachel had a sense of style, jeez. Overall, I really liked this OVA. Now this? This is good shit, literal chef's kiss, and the best OVA out of everything here in this video. It just shows what I keep saying when I say Aloise and Claude had so much potential as a butler master pair. This OVA is basically a day in the life of Aloise Trancy and his estate, except instead of Aloise solving a case as the Queen Spider or doing mundane noble stuff, Aloise finds a butterfly and rips off its wing because this kid has a lot of problems and needs a lot of therapy. 
Deciding to keep the literal dying butterfly as a pet, he orders Claude to get him a cage as well as flowers for the butterfly to drink. This is where we get to see the dynamics of other demons, like the triplet demons hate Claude, they love Hannah for her boobs, and Hannah kinda hates Claude, but he also kinda hates her. Then again, Claude hates everyone. I don't know, I feel like Claude and Hannah have this weird tension to them. Like, I literally feel like these two got down with it or something because they give bitter ex vibes. Maybe that's why it's kind of implied Hannah had romantic feelings for Claude at the last possible minute in the first season. Maybe? In the end, the butterfly dies, and before Claude can dispose of it for Alois, he sets it on fire to try and give it a funeral pyre to it. Alois has a PTSD attack during this, and it ends with Claude excited for Alois' soul, and describes him like a fire. He just wishes that Alois burned brighter, which, I mean, all he had to do was keep mentally torturing this poor kid if he wanted that. It ends with Eloise narrating that he realizes he's actually the wingless butterfly trapped in a spider's web, and I guess that's supposed to remind the audience that Alois was treated like shit by the writing staff. The end! Aside from my playful jabs, I do genuinely love this OVA. I love Claude and Alois's personalities, and how they both clash yet somehow manage to function. I don't know, it's just a really fascinating at seeing this broken and unstable child basically order around with the equivalent of a giant ravenous wolf. Overall, this OVA is fantastic. I love it. A lot of these OVAs may be cringy and kind of bad, but aside from Will the Reaper, I do have a lot of fun watching these. It's also pretty nostalgic for me too, as I remember the art and writings I made based off of these OVAs. Even if I look back and cringe at the heavy fan service these OVAs give, like geez, A1 Pictures is just completely shameless when it comes to Black Butler 1 and 2 here. Still though, I recommend watching them. If you want to officially support these seasons, almost all the OVAs are available with their English dubs on Netflix. The only one missing is that Butler Performer because that was included in season 1's release and Netflix just loves having only season 2 for some reason. That's it for this video and as always, you guys let me know down below what you think. I'd also really love to know how else I can keep my videos on Black Butler going for you guys as the next season focusing on the manga school arc isn't available yet at the time of this video and I won't be able to review it until a few episodes are out to check the quality. I was thinking next to explore a lot of really stupid theories for Black Butler so as always let me know down below your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!